Mark chapter 2. <clears throat> and again, he, Jesus, entered Capernaum. That was back in chapter 1, verse 21. After some days, so there's periods go by. Time went by. And it was noise that he was in the house. I don't know what house, but noise. Everybody's talking. That's a great way to put it. You know, we get a bunch of people jabbering. It's a bunch of noise. And straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Now go back over chapter 1 and go through what we read 21 through 28. He, he healed a man that had an unclean spirit in the temple. That got out. He's back. Now we're not sure if the news of his, uh, well, I mean Simon's mother-in-law, the devil's cast out 32 to 34 in chapter 1. We're not sure if the leper got out in chapter 1, verse 4. But the news is, here's the healer. Here's the one that can take care of your infirmities. Quick, let's go get them. And they're not looking for salvation. They're looking for, end my boo-boos, end my pain, end my sorrows. And again, as I said last chapter, last night look at the state of Israel and I just read in Exodus today in my, my personal reading that Moses told the children of Israel if you do what I told you to do none of these diseases of Egypt will come upon you here they are leprosy devils and when you read the Psalms it said I forget which one it said but it said that God sent evil angels amongst them I forget which one that was so here they are. What condition are they are in? It's, they're unclean, they're unhealthy, and they're unright with God. What a, this would be the last time you think Jesus would have came. You think Jesus would have came in Ezra and Nehemiah when they got right? Pop, hey, how you guys doing? Hey, see the good works you're doing. All right, here I am. Not so. So, <clears throat> there's just noise about. He's in a house. People are coming by the droves. They're listening to him. Now watch this. Straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. Packed. Now you're going to start seeing a little trouble you don't see yet. From chapter 1 verse 21, he's starting to get crowds. People are coming to see him now. Uh, receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them look at that he's got a great crowd of people and he preaches the word and they come with unto him now they couldn't come unto him because it said the place is full their motive is we're coming to Jesus uh oh we can't Bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. Four had to carry this guy on his bed. And when they could not come nigh unto him, for the press, I like that. I like how it says that, for the press. It means a lot of people. But I like to spiritualize that one. They uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, I always imagine what the house owner of this place is. There's Jesus teaching. You know, all the sounds. You ever, if you've ever taken wood apart and nails and all that, it's not something that's very quiet. And all of a sudden, here comes this beam of light and dust. And, and Jesus, I don't know if it's right over Jesus' head or something. And Jesus looks up. You know it. And when they broke it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. Now, here's here's a hole big enough to at least a minimum, a minimum of five feet, a minimum. That's a big. I mean, they're not going to drop the guy sideways. He's going to make it worse. They're going to lower this guy from the roof horizontal all the way down to Jesus. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Man, they wanted Jesus. 
Now, you don't think Jesus is going to pay attention to this? And when Jesus saw their faith, who? The people that carried him. Man, they're the ones up there taking the hammers and the nails and destroying this place. He said unto the sick of Posley, Son, that's interesting. Son, the guy's got to be Jewish. He's not going to say that to a, a Gentile. You got a speaker problem here. He's not going to say that to a Gentile. You remember what he said to the Gentile woman? Dog, thy sins be forgiven thee. Ooh. Well, that's not something preached today in the churches, is it? In order to be saved, you got to have pulse so you have four people bring you through the ceiling. And thou shalt be saved. You see what happens when you go running into the Bible? Oh, I found a great... So everyone that has palsy, bring him over to your, your friend's house, break up the roof, let the guy down, and he'll be saved. And what Jesus is saying here, the faith is, it's not only just the faith to heal this guy, but the faith to go even beyond healing. I mean, you just don't go break up a roof. I mean, you know there's going to be anger. You know there's going to be consequences. You know there's going to be a courtroom drama here coming up. I mean, you got to pay for that roof. And they probably gladly paid for it. But, now this is AD 31. I, I don't know about the dates. They know better than I do. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts it has now begun doubt envy they've already begun to hate jesus why because all the people came to him and not us there was a synagogue in capernaum 121 well shouldn't they all be going to the synagogue they're going to jesus in a house jesus has a house church ministry <gasps> Oh man, forsake the building of the church to have a house church ministry. Yeah. Now, can you just now? I'd like to read a little more into the Bible than there is. <laughs> can you imagine if Jesus was back in that synagogue and they broke the roof on that building? <laughs> That's why he was in the house. Yeah. And listen. I'm all for house church. Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of. You got a King James Bible, you're doing right by God, and there's no other facility. And it has to be your living room, and, and one guy is teaching, and you're not reading a passage. That, well, what do you think, Charlie? What do you think, Sam? What do you think, Mary? You're teaching and preaching the Bible. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. The Bible in Acts says they went house to house to house to house. And you fall in the cloth. Well, you didn't go to the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what's more important. You got the scribe and Pharisee and Sadducee. It's the building. Remember the final clause? They got Jesus on his boat. They destroyed this building and raised up the three. How dare you talk about the church building? But look at this. This is a house and much was done. And a guy was saved. And a guy was healed in the house. And the religionists are upset because it's already begun. Why does this man thus speak blasphemy? See, already blasphemy is coming up. Who can forgive sins but God only? Ooh, you just open up your big mouth. I told today when I was at the farmer's market preaching the street, yeah, they have a memory verse. And it's out of Acts 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And I told him, I said, listen, if you don't get saved, wouldn't it be funny at the great white throne judgment that I read from, that if you'll stand there and God say, okay, what's that memory verse you got? What memory verse? What's that preacher been preaching to you? And then you start quoting Acts 16, 31, and then God tells you to go off to hell. Imagine this guy or a guy standing at the great white throne judgment. And what would you say about Jesus? Who can forgive sins but God? And who forgave sins? Ha! He has to be God then. Out of your own big fat mouth, you condemned yourself. 
Isn't God great? You know, you let men talk, and they'll give themselves enough rope to hang each other. You know, there's a joke. There's a courtroom. And there's an Indian and a cowboy. They're being before the judge. The cowboy goes up to the to the judge and oh you know I got my rights and oh yeah it wasn't me and you know the cops they 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 didn't it wasn't mine it was my mother it was blah 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 guy says five hundred dollars Indian steps up there judge goes what's your plea Ooh. what do you guys say to the judge Ugo come on what do you got to say Ugo Ugo Ooh. get this man out of the courthouse so the, kin, so the Indian and the cowboy are out in the floor in the courthouse, and the Indian looks at the, at the white man and says, White man talk too much. The more you talk, the more you get yourself. And that's used by the police. That's used by investigators. They know how to get you. They do it in interviews of jobs. These people hung themselves. And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason with it oh they didn't say that out loud they were thinking it be careful what you think not only what you say be careful what you think God will judge you for you think and Jesus spoke up he said unto them okay he's gonna say orally why reason ye these things in your hearts? Run that to within themselves. And they reason in their hearts. Verse 7 was never said audibly, but God heard it. You talk underneath your breath, my friend. Children, you talk about your children under your breath. God heard it. And God will hear to you to be responsible unless you put it under the blood, repent, and get it right. You know what repentance means? Means confessing. You may have to walk up to your parents and say, you know what? I said something about you under my breath and I just want to say I'm sorry. What, whether is it easier to say to the sick or the palsy? Thy sins be forgiven thee, one, or to say, number two, arise and take up thy bed and walk. What put this man in the palsy condition? Sin. And it may have never been nothing. He may have been born with it. He may have caught it if it's contagious. But the wages of sin is death. So the first part of healing you got to get is the healing of sin. That's why you got to deal with your sins by the blood of Jesus Christ because you just can't leave them undone. So, but that ye may know that the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, has power on earth to forgive sins he saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into that. He gives a look. Listen, I have that power. Mr. Palsy man, take up your bed and go. He leaves them off in mid sentence, like, you know, you interrupted me. I was dealing with this guy over here. And they didn't interrupt him. They said, it. it's like, thy sins be forgiven thee. Oh, who does he think he should be? Uh, excuse me, I heard that. Now, will you just shut up? Because I'm God. I can forgive their sins. I'm sorry for interrupting this the same thing. You can take up your bed and go. That's what it was. Now, can you imagine what their face looked like after before the people? There's a lot of people here. And he just put them to shame. They just realized, wait a minute. Not only can he heal, but he can also tell what they're thinking. Rise and walk and take up thy bed and go thy way unto thy... When he'd been happy to do that. He's been laying in that bed. We don't know how long. Now he gets to carry it. And immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. 
Now, read your Bible. There is a mass of people you couldn't even get in the house, but they allow him to walk out. Some people have to leave, or they're just like, okay, get out of the way of this thing. Something. Now he can leave. And went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed. And glorified God, there's the purpose, there's the reason. Saying, we never saw it on this fashion. This plan, this idea, this we've never seen anything like this happen. If you just saw the devil cast out in chapter 1 in your own city. Now he's taking the people, the religious people, and he's putting them down. Who are defying him. I mean, that's just taking salt and rubbing it into a wound. He went forth again by the seaside. And all the, mul all the multitude resorted. And you see where you get your seaside resort? You get it out of a Bible. Unto him, and he taught them. How many pastors would find a group of people that would listen somewhere and then sit down, okay, fine, let's start learning the Bible? Not too many today, not too many people would be listening, but that's what the street ministry is. I go down there and teach the people about sins, death, and hell. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, and heaven. I taught them what God expects them to do. That's street preaching. The multitude resulted on him. Where is he? He's by the seaside. He's not in a building. He's not in a church. He's on the sand preaching on the beach. <laughs> and there were no bikinis and all that. Right that came much, 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 much later. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the seat of custom, the tax collector. Mark tells us his name is Levi Matthew. Here's the call of Matthew. The one we just did the gospel about. He's the tax collector. Tribute. The most hated one in the group. Now isn't it funny that Jesus called a tax collector and churches today are tax exempt? I say, I, I just think that you'll find yourself in trouble. And said unto him, follow me and he rose and followed him i didn't do that it took me a week two weeks three weeks maybe four weeks to following to give in to following jesus but man that day when i got saved i followed that next day i was witnessing i had gospel tracks i was there wednesday night i was And it came to pass that as Jesus said at me in his house, remember we read this story in Matthew 9, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. So he's got publicans and sinners following him. These are the ill people, ill, them people. And when the, who's already given them problems, scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with the publicans and see, look how long they've already started giving him trouble. You're getting the mass of people, they're not coming to church, now you're hanging out with them people. And if you want a remarkable story to this, you read the story of William and Claire Booth of the Salvation Army. How the church pulled them off one side again and say, listen, you can't bring those people here. You're either going to have to leave this church or leave those people outside the door. But you ain't bringing them in here. And I forget what Mrs. Booth said, but I can't do the English accent. She stood up and said, we're not staying here no more. Now, I don't think she had the right to say that over the authority of her husband, but she was right. Read the story of William and Clara Booth, all the ill kind of people, the drunkards, the prostitutes, and all that. Or was it? Saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples. 
All right, they said it in their hearts. Verse 6. Verse 16, they say it to the disciples. They have not yet walked up to Jesus and said, You know what? You're trouble. You're a problem. But they're getting there. They're working their way to the top. And it usually begins in your heart. Then you start getting the people around. How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Ew, the scum. And when Jesus heard it, we don't told, we're not told if anybody, if he perceived or Peter came, hey, Peter, you know, uh, Jesus, you know what they're saying about you? He said unto them, he went to them and said, okay, I got something to say to you. They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. Look at that. Jesus said, if you're not whole, Go to a doctor. Now with the king of Asa, who sought the doctors more than he sought God, this is what you do when you're sick. And there's me and another man I know we're praying about with our feet. We seek God in prayer about it. We went to the doctors as prescribed, done what the doctors told, and we still rely on God and not man. There are people out there, oh, you don't go see a doctor by faith. No, 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 no. Jesus did said, how do you get it? He said, if you're not, if you're whole, you don't need that physician. But if you're sick, go to the doctor. I came not to call the righteous. Talking to them. They're righteous. But they're going to go to hell. How's that? They do everything right. They got the right forks, the right spoons, the right, they wash their hands, they fall, but they're going to go to hell. But sinners to repentance. God doesn't want you right. He wants you when you do wrong. He wants you to repent of your sins and get right. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, there's another problem. Why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? And then we ran into this with Matthew. Look at you guys, they're eating and drinking. We fast. John's disciples fast. And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber fast? When the bridegroom is with them. Well, that's not the time to start fasting. That's like saying, hey, you're going to marry somebody. Like Paul said, you and a wife, you can fast of sexual intimacy for a time. Well, that's like saying you're getting married. Okay, we're, we're not going to have no sex for a period. No, 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 no. You got a... a church fellowship coming up well don't go say you're gonna fast on that day move it one more day bridegroom is with them as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast there he is Jesus with them he just told the people he's the groom well if there's a groom guess what there's got to be a bride You know, he just told them already, the Jews are going to give up on Jesus. Because the Jews are God's bride, Hosea. The church is Jesus' bride. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. There he goes. He's already started to say. That would be Acts chapter 1 when he goes to the Father at his right hand. Or even still the death, burial, and resurrection. And then goes to the Father. And then shall they fast in those days. No man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that filleth it up taketh away from the old, and the rent is made worse. Again, I don't know what the illustration of this is. And no man putteth a new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine does burst the bottles, and the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. 
And I've heard people say the reference is to the New and the Old Testament. You can't put the Old Testament in the New because it'll burst it. And that's true. You can't put the church under the law. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. Uh-oh. Bam, 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 bam. And his disciples, not Jesus, his disciples, as they went be, be, yeah, to pluck the ears of corn. Now, this is a double problem. Your disciples don't fast. Well, yeah, because I'm the groom. We don't fast right now. Now we got the Sabbath and they're eating. We just yelled at you about eating. And the, and the Pharisees said unto him, Now they come to Jesus. But see, the problem was the disciples. These guys cannot walk to the person that has the problem and deal with the problem with the person. Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? What, you mean eat that you just yelled at? All right, now you're working on the Sabbath day. And he said unto them, Have you never read what David did? Uh-oh, Samuel 21, 1 through 6. Talking to the ones that are supposed to know the law, the books. When he, when he had a need and was a hunger, he and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar. So Jesus just told you, A, David's real. B, Abiathar is real. 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6 is real. Thank you, Jesus. He just confirmed the word. Just in case anybody doesn't believe that story. Probably somewhere someone doesn't. The high priest. And did eat the showbread. Now that's a lot more than eating ears of corn, wheat. This bread was only for the priests. Which is not lawful to eat but for the priests. And gave also to them which were with him. You guys are so worried that they're taking a little husk of, of grain and eating it on the Sabbath day. What did David do? David had sacred bread. He and his soldiers. And you were not supposed to eat that. Now, isn't that a real problem? And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man to rest. God says, Take one day and rest. And not the man for the Sabbath. And later on, you'll read in the gospel, he said, you know, your lamb fell into a hole. Don't you lift him out? Don't you go to the barn on a Sabbath and water your animals? If a child needs to be circumcised, the eighth day is a Sabbath. Don't you do that surgery? You're nitpicking. You, you just, therefore, the Son of Man, Jesus, is Lord also on the Sabbath. Don't worry about the Sabbath. I'm the one that made the Sabbath. They're hungry. They're breaking. Go ahead. Go back in the law and find where they were not supposed to take any husk. You weren't supposed to cook. They're not cooking. They're just taking a husk, rubbing it between their fingers. Oh, there's let's see that's what they're doing you can't find that in in the old testament now you couldn't go out and gather it but they're walking they're in a field walking uh, while we're here didn't the law say they were allowed to do that didn't say if you were in a vineyard you could grab some grapes and eat them but just can't take excess well they're obeying the law and the Pharisees knew it, so they had to find a law that they could be breaking so they can try to get them. Why would they try to get them already? Why are they try They're trying to get him to Calvary now. 
trying to make these, these this Jesus and his group trying to make them outlaws, and they can't. So you see, Jesus had Satan and Jesus had the religious peoples all through his entire life when he walked and talked and lived on this earth. And I think a greater verse would be for Jesus, all they that live godly since he is God shall suffer persecution. 